Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. We have some 450 autos that were reintroduced, and I have a lot to say about them. Some good, but mostly bad. And with the bad things, I hope some sort of buff with Beyond Light is coming. The perks have changed since we saw them last, and there's a couple of gems in here, but I'm not sure if it's enough to make them really stand out, which is a shame because the previous perks were really good for them, and I plan to talk about those previous perks as well. This is one of those frustrating scenarios of sunsetting. Before we start comparing these two auto rifles to find some winners, I do want to give a shout out to my friends over at Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. One of the biggest things for me is that it's the only privacy product that allows unlimited simultaneous devices. I have it on my desktop, my phone, on my router for my PlayStation. You can have it on as many devices as you want. Surfshark encrypts your data, keeps it safe, it hides your true IP address when browsing the web, accessing content, and while you're gaming. With lots of people working from home, that extra security is invaluable as to protect you from data theft tracking, surveillance, commercial targeting. It's extremely user-friendly, it sets you right up with the quickest server. And the servers are no joke. The server location nearest to me, it's actually a fiber connection. It's very good. It works as an app or browser extension, and allows you to place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world. It lets you access the internet as if you're in that country. So with something like Netflix, you can change from the UK to the US, or US to UK. There are about 15 different Netflix libraries to go out and explore. And what's great for us gamers is you can game in full privacy and security. That includes big ones like hiding your IP in Discord, other chats, you just don't have to worry about it. And it also protects you from being a target of a DDoS attack. That's a big one. And with it being so user friendly, it's going to walk you right through step by step for the things you want to set up. As an example, on the console level, PlayStation or Xbox, you can set up a smart DNS. It's right there, step for step. Protection is key, and they still have a great deal for us. You can use my code COOLGUY to get 83% off plus three extra months free. There's a link down below right at the top of the description. That much off and three months free, and if for whatever reason you're unhappy, they do back a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Self. I love this VPN. I really hope all of you get behind Surfshark as they've gotten behind me. It's a really good deal that they have for us. With this little battle we have going on here with Braytech and Horror Story, let's find out if they're worth grinding for. And real quick, I say yes. For a couple reasons I'm going to get into, I want to talk about what roles to look for. If there's a clear winner in head-to-head -head for PvE, for PvP, there's lots to talk about. And even compare the curated roles that we have from our collections. A lot of this video is talking about the current spot that they're in, because that needs to be highlighted. To get them, you grab some ciphers, complete some haunted forest, you hope for a drop. So let's start off with the base stats. Braytech edges it out in every stat, notably aim assist and range. Now mouse and keyboard players, you don't really have to worry about stability, but regardless, these two basically have the same stability. We have the precision frame as well, so even on console controller, they shoot pretty good. They will shoot better, they will feel better once the field of view and 60 frame update comes to the next generation consoles on December 8th. That's going to be a literal game changer. Perks are a big deal and what separates them overall, but there are some other defining factors. One of them accepts barrels, the other accepts scopes. Since that's the case, technically Horror Story will have the most range because it accepts a zoom factor. You can get a high range stat on the bar and then have the scope. Braytech is going to be locked in with what it has, but you can get something like Arrowhead Break and other barrels. Other than that, they're going to share the same range. But an important note, some have never really liked the Braytech site, I don't mind it, and that means you might shift to the Horror Story like Red Dots. Keep in mind with this one, this AR does have muzzle flash. It's another reason that you could sway away from this one. Both could have potential negatives. At base for PvE, there's a rabbit hole we can go down. While yes, you can have some fun in general play, even in the event right now in the Haunted Forest, they can do well, and bonus points to Braytech for highlighting enemies in the dark. But when push comes to shove, these are good for trash mobs. Then again, when you really think about it, most weapons are. They lack something like the Warmind cell system, and the Seraph Carbine comes to mind as a 450. So currently at base, they lack some stopping power, therefore you're going to rely on perk sets. And right here is where we can start talking about the curated roles from the collections. Rampage for Horror Story, Multi-Kill Clip for Braytech. Damage dealing perks are always highly sought after, but these perks don't necessarily mean that if you don't have them, the weapon is bad. But on these 450s, they do help a great amount. With the rise of 600s, even in PvE, Gnawling Hunger has a place. A good place, a place where these can't really quite reach currently, in my opinion. I would personally like to see a little bit more of an auto rifle buff here in PvE for these 450s to spice it up a bit. The balance for these has always been ease of use. You know exactly what you're getting out of them with that precision frame. For the Crucible, I pointed out last year that these 450s had rounding errors and they're not doing the damage that they were supposed to be doing. We would have found that out sooner, but since these have been buried in our vault for so long, we just couldn't have known. But this in turn resulted in them taking more shots to kill. They're supposed to be at a base .93, which is longer than the Crucible's average .8 TTK. It was taking well over one second with those rounding errors. 
They felt weaker than they should have been, that's not good. This has since been fixed. They are now doing the appropriate shot to kill for a .93, that's 6 crits and 2 body. It has a 1.47 body TCK for 11 body shots. And here's something with those numbers, it's actually quite impressive. These are the only guns in the game, these 450 ARs, that have the slowest optimal and body TTK for an archetype when you're comparing it to others within the weapon class. Like, the 150 Scout has the fastest scout time to kill, but it also has the slowest body time to kill out of all scouts. For the hand cannons, the 150s had the fastest optimal TTK, the 140s the slowest body TTK. These 450 ARs have the slowest optimal and body TTK. But that comes again with the feeling that these are easy to use. These are always going to have to consider the meta around them. Currently, the 600s are way too good. They wipe the floor with these on various levels. If or when the 600s get changed, I could see these 450s getting some play. Not to be a real meta contender, but reliable. To be a solid weapon choice, similar to the 390 pulses like Bygones. Just a solid shooting experience, you know exactly what you're getting, a forgiving TTK. Those 600s are just burying these right now. And I say again, pay attention to the meta around them, because you know exactly what you're getting out of these. And when there are outliers, like the 600s, it's going to come to a point that it's just going to be an easy choice. We don't know what sandbox changes are coming, but maybe these get a buff, others get a nerf. That's why it's always going to be worth it to grab rolls. So that's really the bulk of the video, the reviews, because if the base stats, the bones aren't sound, it's a really steep hill to climb. PvP wise, currently they're severely outclassed, but they do have an ease of use factor. That's the risk reward, that's the trade off. If you like these, use them, go for it, have fun, you do you, do your thing. They're currently a little too frustrating for me. Right now there's too much of a gap between these and the 600 ARs, and most other weapons for that matter. Because even though the weapon shoots true, the majority of your engagements, you're hoping for your opponent to miss, and that's never good. PvE wise, they do just fine, but they do have limitations in higher tier play. For the perks to be looking out for, first, if you're going for that secret triumph for the 40 ciphers, you're going to come across some rolls, so always look at them, you never know what changes are going to happen. I say that though with the biggest grain of salt. I did this previously, I grinded and grinded previously for this Bray Tech with Outlaw Kill Clip, absolutely perfect in every way, arrowhead or polygonal, ricochet rounds, range masterwork, it's solid. But turns out, this is its final season, 1060 power. These new 450s, this horror story, this Bray Tech that we're getting now, are capped at 1360, and also the ones that you pull from collections. I approach these as if I get them, I get them. I'm really looking forward to new gear, and something tells me with how they've changed perks from where Bray Tech and Horror Story were to where they are now with their new perk set, if we've been paying attention, weapon rolls have been getting away from Rampage and Kill Clip, these damage dealing perks. Just something to look out for. With both of these ARs, you might have to live with the scope, or the barrel, or the mag. You know what you like, stability and range wise. If you're a mouse and keyboard, you tend more so for range, console more so for stability. For the Bray Tech barrels, the recoil direction is decent at base, and it's decent because it's pairing with the precision frame, so if you get any recoil direction perks, it's gonna help it out. All of them are gonna tighten up the recoil pattern for a controller. Onto the perks, I have grinded these and I got the ones that I want that I wanna talk about and show you. For Horror Story for the Crucible, one of the top rolls is this one right here. I think it's the top roll. It's Killing Wind, Moving Target. You can pair Killing Wind with any perk in the second node, but with Moving Target, that's a rare perk combination, and this roll helps you tremendously because it helps to make opponents miss shots. Moving Target gives a passive buff to your aim assist. It gives you a faster strafe. Killing Wind, after a kill, it grants accuracy for a tighter cone, a faster strafe, snapshot. Very snappy. It feels great. The shots are sticky, and it's actually a very unique shooting experience. It feels crazy good, the strafe helps tremendously. The second roll is going to be for Firmly Planted, and these 450s with Firmly Planted are no joke. Laser Beams, I do prefer Uriels for Firmly Planted, but this one's good too. You want to pair that with Moving Target, so when you're not crouched, you're strafing a little bit faster. There's also Slide Way, so you can slide into the crouch, get the stability buff with the ammo. And then lastly, Demolitionist. It's going to be good to bypass a reload and to get some energy back. For PvE, you're going to rely on Ambitious Assassin, Outlaw, and Subsistence in the first node. And you're going to pair Demolitionist first, and then something like Osmosis. Ultimately, you can pull the roll out from Collections, which is the Rampage roll, and that might be the better option for PvE for a lot of you. For Bray Tech, top PvP roll is going to go to Dynamic Sway Reduction and Tap the Trigger, or Swashbuckler. I have Dynamic Sway and Swashbuckler, it's nice, and this also doubles as a PvE roll. There's also a roll combination for Dynamic Sway and Elemental Capacitor if you're on a Void subclass for more stability. For PvE, you should be looking for Mulligan and Vorpal, or 4 times a Charm and Vorpal. There's also the Curated roll that's in Moment and Multi-Kill Clip. This is going to double as PvE and PvP. So, 
If you can pull it from collections and none of these roles go your way in this event, you're always going to have these curated roles. Ultimately, it depends on what you want to do. I believe for the new perks, the best PvP role is going to go to Horror Story for Killing Wind and Moving Target, and I really do. It helps the downfalls of the weapon, Killing Wind is elite, and that's going to say a lot taking this combination over damage dealing perks. It feels completely different than most weapons in the game. For PvE, I would actually go Bray Tech with 4th Time to Charm and Vorpal. You put on a minor spec and you're covered, minors to majors to bosses. So look out for rolls, we never know what's going to come in a sandbox. It really feels like they're prepping for a buff to these some way, somehow. It could be a nerf to other weapons. I don't know though. But with these, you know exactly what you get out of them. Very easy to shoot. And for some of you, you might love it. And for others, it might come up a little bit short. Both views are perfectly okay. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. I do have channel memberships live as well. And if you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff. Use the link down below and use my code COOL at checkout for a discount. Let's talk about this event, these weapons, and what we think is going to happen with them for Beyond Light. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.